you uh, who, who didn't see that. Uh, what you'll see is there's a brief kind of flash, right? Uh, it doesn't just like cut cleanly from one to the other. And so the question is like, what's going on there, right? And what's going on there is we, again, use an on-demand paged asset system. So uh, what happens is we dynamically load everything in the background off the hard drive. And especially on this machine, this is a 7200 RPM hard drive. That's going to be kind of slow, although it's probably mostly in the cache at this point. But either way, point being, it's kind of slow to page those things in. It's, it's at least going to take a frame uh, or two of latency for the asset systems threads to go grab those other uh, images off of the hard drive and put them into memory where we can draw from them, right? And so what we want to do is we want to try and solve that sort of glitchy problem uh, so that we don't get any uh, you know errors in there. And you know, like one way to solve this obviously is just to have a big old loading screen you slap in front of everything and you just uh, do this whole loading thing and you waste a bunch of memory potentially and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but we don't want to do that. No loading screens on Handmade Hero, preferably. We want everything to be instant. As soon as the user clicks it, it's good to go, right? That's our preference. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to have an alternative to that, okay? Uh, so let's start by, start by talking about like what that problem actually is uh, in practice here, right? Uh, so here we go. I'm going to try and uh, sort of show you. In fact, you know what? The best place to do this is probably in the debugger, right? Uh, so let's just take a look, because this will happen even the very first time we do render cutscene. And so here's the problem, right? We come into the first time we do rendered cutscene, and we have rendered layered scene there. So you can see it. Uh, and if I step into rendered layered scene, we're going to go through each layer index, we're going to pull them out, uh, and then we're going to see, in each one of these, we're going to see uh, you know, what, what that bitmap actually is. And you can see that we get back the bitmap ID here, and that's all working properly, because that's all stuff that happens just using uh, sort of the, the, if you want to, I don't know if directory is the right term, but basically the database, the table, the data table uh, for our asset system, which can instantly answer these queries. So we ask and we instantly get back, um, oh, that's asset 251 that you were looking for. So then we go to render with asset uh, 251, right? Uh, and of course, we got to pack up some, some floats, uh, some vectors there. Uh, and so we come in here and we, we call get bitmap with that ID. Now get bitmap, of course, is just going to ask the asset loader for that thing. It comes in here, and as you can see, it immediately fails to actually get it because it's not there, right? It hasn't been loaded yet. That asset state uh, is, not, is not set, right? And you can see, uh, if we look at the state here, the state's set to zero. So it's like, oh, okay, that's not good um, because we can't actually get it. Now it'll go ahead and say, oh, uh, you know, that's okay, I'll, I'll issue a command to load that bitmap so the bitmap will get loaded, right? But what that means is now when this frame goes off to render, it's just missing that bitmap. And that's the entirety of the problem right there. It's just that when we ask for the bitmap, okay, it's like, okay, thanks for telling me, I gotta go load that. That frame, even if we're able to have like a really short turnaround from the drive, that frame is going to finish rendering before the drive ever gets back to us with that data, right? That's just, and even if it got back sooner, we've already made the decision that it's not there and we're already not going to render it, right? So we basically have to solve that problem. So what I want to do to solve that problem uh, is very simple. It's called a prefetch. What I want to do is I want to give the asset system a little bit of extra time because especially in a cutscene, there's really no excuse for, for not doing so. Because, you know, we know exactly what assets are going to get used in the cutscene, and we know exactly when they're going to get used. So there's really no excuse for us not pre, uh, you know, sort of like announcing, if you will, to the asset system, hey man, here's what you're going to need very shortly, get those loads in flight for me, please, right? Uh, and that's really, I think, all we'll probably have to do. The first thing that I want to do, though, is I'd like to get this playing back at an artificially fast rate, just so we can see it happen a little more clearly, okay? So here is us advancing the cutscene at a much more rapid rate uh, than we would have otherwise, right? So here is us zipping through the cutscene, right? And you can see that blinking happening at various times there, right? Uh, so that's all nice and good. And, uh, you know, you can see that kind of little flicker. And so what we want to do is get rid of that little flicker, okay? Uh, so to get rid of that little flicker, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this prefetch? Well, if you'll notice, we kind of have a nice thing here where we can just go through and say, oh, here, render this cutscene. And we give it a cutscene time, and it does some stuff, right? 
And the entirety of this routine is actually very simple. There's not a lot to it. It's all pretty easy. Uh, there's not, you know, there really isn't a whole lot uh, that needs to happen there. And so what I could do, right, uh, is I could just render the cutscene twice if I wanted to. Uh, and and basically the, the first one that, you know, the, the one that we're actually going to uh, render can be at the current time. But then it's pretty free for me to just render another cutscene at a future time. And instead of ever actually asking it to commit those bitmaps, I could just throw it away. But I guess it was. Uh, which it should be reasonably good with, I think. Uh, but we don't really know like how long that load, how long the loading time actually is for our assets, if that makes sense. Uh, so let's take a look at what that would actually have to be. I'm going to turn it back um, now so that it doesn't uh, do sort of the blitz thing, if that makes sense. If I could manage to search for it. There we go. Uh, so if we're back to our normal time, uh, then this would of course be, 20 seconds would of course be too long. So, you know, we'll see, uh, I don't know, for slower, it was, you know, even just one second. Stay in there. I think that would be correct. Like a big old delay. This thing have a full, like anything, right? Uh, so there's absolutely nothing in it, and there's no actual, like, anything, right? There's no, it's just a bunch of zero, right? Something like that. Uh, and so now we could have this thing have a duration. So we could say, oh, when we do, you know, when we do our asset none and all this sort of thing, uh, so it's zero, 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 uh, and then we would put a duration here, right? If we wanted to, we could have like a big old delay in there somewhere, right? Uh, wait a minute, is that the right one for it? Asset opening cutscene is asset none, then we have index, then we have array count, then we have intro layers. Yeah. So I think, I think that would be correct. Let me see if I can put a big old delay in there just so I can make sure it's actually there. Oh, right. We're never using that one. There we go. Uh, so now there should be a delay in there, right? Uh, so, perfect. We now have a delay in there, and so now all we need to do is make sure that we have enough of a delay so that it can load things, uh, which it should be reasonably good with, I think, uh, but we don't really know like how long that load, how long the loading time actually is for our assets, if that makes sense. Uh, so let's take a look at what that would actually have to be. I'm going to turn it back um, now so that it doesn't uh, do sort of the blitz thing, if that makes sense. Let's see here. Let us see here. If I can manage to search for it. There we go. Uh, so if we're back to our normal time, uh, then this would of course be, 20 seconds would of course be too long. So, you know, we'll see, uh, I don't know, for slower, it was, you know, even just one second, which it seems like a long time, right? That didn't seem like one second to me, but I guess it was. So now we don't get that blink at the startup because we've given the streaming system enough time to load everything in, which is what we wanted. Uh, and yeah, that might take some tuning. We could also do something where we wait intentionally to make sure that everything's loaded, uh, but so that it has enough time to be loading ahead. But at the very start, that first time, the last cutscene at time, right? So it never asks for that. You know, when it's rendering the last cutscene, it never looks ahead into the, the first cutscene. But that's actually okay because normally we would not be looping it. So we really don't have to fix that problem. But the problem that we do want to fix is this right here. That first time it comes up, we would rather not have that happen, right? And so I think what we want to do there uh, is because if this is the very first thing you see in the game, there's nothing we can look ahead from. We're just starting up, we gotta start rendering. So typically what I do, because you know, the stream system's always trying to run a little ahead of everything else. But at the very start of the program, there's no way it could be ahead. So what I usually do is basically like the loading screen that I have, if you will, is just to give it maybe just like 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds of black, right? Just like a quick little black screen on boot. 
so that it has enough time to be loading ahead, right? And so what I would say here is just say, oh, okay, uh, you know, uh, we would just do something like this, where it'd just be like, there's nothing in the scene at all. Like, at all, at all. I think there's a none. Is there a none? Think there's a none? Think there's a none? Is there a none? Yeah. Uh, so there's absolutely nothing in it, and there's no actual like anything, right? There's no, it's just a bunch of zero, right? Something like that. Uh, and so now we could have this thing have a duration. So we could say, oh, when we do, you know, when we do our asset none and all this sort of thing, uh, so it's zero, 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 uh, and then we would put a duration here, right? If we wanted to, we could have like a big old delay in there somewhere, right? Uh, wait a minute, is that the right one for it? Asset opening cutscene is asset none, then we have index, then we have array count, then we have off to the right there uh, it you know it's now almost entirely gone as it kind of comes around uh, so if I go into the game and now come back you can see that's where we start again right so we don't really want that you know we want the ability to, to restart instead of it it sort of stays of uh, game getting thinking that it's in the game and it's not or thinking that there's heroes when they're not but uh, we don't really have any way of uh, of knowing that we transitioned from a state of playing cutscenes to a state of not playing cutscenes. And so that's the next thing we should do, but at this point we're at the five minute warning, so I don't want to start in on that yet. Uh, since I gotta go a little early tonight anyway, I feel like what I would rather do is just go to the Q&A now. Uh, since I gotta go a little early tonight anyway, I feel like what I would rather do is just go to the Q&A now uh, so that we can get any... Uh, so let me go ahead and move it to Q&A. There we go. Insofar as would adding a block until loaded style function be a good idea to make sure function be a good idea to make sure Insofar as would add Insofar as would adding a block until loaded style function be a good idea to make sure even lo slower computers have all the layers loaded before the scene starts uh, Yeah, potentially it depends what you want to optimize for right uh, and we already have one so if we want to do that there actually is one of those um, it's a uh, it is, where is it, handmade render group, uh, it's this, uh, right here. So if you wanted to, for example, like what we could do, uh, in fact we could do this right now, is let's, uh, let me just it's this. Uh, it's this. Uh, right here. So if you wanted to, for example, like what we could do, uh, in fact, we could do this right now, is let's, uh, let me just, just to show you how that's done. And, and we could do it, we could leave it this way. It's not a bad idea um, to just do. Uh, so if we do it like this, right? And we don't have any glitches because we're doing our prefetches. Prefetches, uh, yay for us, right? Uh, well, if we were to turn off the prefetches to, sl to simulate like a super slow computer or something, right? Um, so if we turned off the prefetch, which is here, uh, we'd be back to glitch land, right? So now we see those glitches happening, you know? If we wanted to turn those glitches into pauses, what we could do instead is just not render any time... Um, we sense that there aren't any of those, uh, that there aren't any uh, assets, pre that, that there are any assets missing, I guess what I'm trying to say. Um, and the way that we would do that, right, is we'd just say like, oh, okay, um, you know, in here, 
uh, when we do tiled render group to output, we could instead do like, okay, just take a look and say if all assets present in here, uh, when we do, you know, in here, you know, in here, uh, when we do tiled render group to output, we could instead do like, okay, just take a look and say if all assets present, right, um, then do the render, otherwise don't. Uh, and so now what it would do is it'd go like, oh, okay, well, you know, now there's a little like hiccup each time, um, but it's really brief, right? Uh, and so that's totally, you know, a, a fine thing to leave in there. And maybe that's what we want, right? Um, and then you can also see like when I do, for example, if I do spacebar, um, you can kind of see that with the exception of our ground tiles, which page in as a separate thing, and that's kind of a different issue. Uh, when we hit that spacebar, that thing also uh, will just wait until it's ready as well. So we can totally do that. That's, uh, that's an easy thing to do and, and probably it can't hurt, right? Probably, so we could just leave that in there. And then once we put you know, our, our, uh, our prefetch back in, then there's no hiccups. And if you should have fall, if, if you know, for some reason it did fall behind, uh, it'd be okay. You know, that'd be okay. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take out that times 10. Uh, isn't there a way to clear the uh, isn't there a way to clear the back buffer using SIMD? Uh, yes. Although it is not necessarily faster, uh, you have to test it to see. Uh, rep rep instructions are often quite fast, and so I don't know what we're using at the moment. But SIMD is not always the fastest way to clear, if I remember correctly. But sometimes it is. Um, since in that case we really don't have to worry because clearing, we only do it in the case where we don't render anything. We don't really have to care how slow the clear is at the moment, and probably we never will have to care. Would be my guess. Uh, will there be any animated cutscenes? Uh, will there be any animated cutscenes or just zooming shots? Uh, just zooming shots, unless you count the the like two frame for the Santa putting the hat on. Uh, can you do a clock? Uh, can you do a clock? Uh, sure. Fifteen thousand three hundred sixty-four. Would it be possible to fade? Would it be possible to fade from the desktop to the game's initial black screen? Uh, yeah, you can if you want to. I'm not a fan of fade to black. Um, I don't, I don't really like fades so much unless you are trying to do them for a very specific reason. Um, you know, if you watch a movie, there are very few fades. They're only employed in very specific, like fades and wipes are used very sparing in any modern cinematography, right? You know, you, you think you think a wipe, you start to think of like 1970, right? Uh, and so fades, you know, are definitely still employed. Wipes very, very, wipes less so, but fades are still employed for certain emotional effects. Uh, but in this case, it's not necessarily one that, it's not probably what I would expect. A fade in, maybe? I don't know if I would want to fade in or not, but, but in terms of can you do it, if you do want that effect, um, you could, and the way that you do that is you would try to get the contents of the desktop background or you'd put up uh, a layered window first and let it fade out. And, you know, uh, Yeah, I, I don't really know. 
I mean, let me let me try and sketch the idea out for you, I guess, because it's not super easy to explain. Um, but I can try to kind of give you what the idea is. Uh, and, and don't do it exactly the way I'm doing it here. Uh, but, you know. Uh, so if I were to do a uh, fade out right here, it's not super easy to explain. Um, but I can try to kind of give you what... I mean, let me, let me try... I mean, let me, let me try and sketch the idea out for you, I guess, because it's not super easy to explain. Um, but I can try to kind of give you what the idea is. Uh, and, and don't do it exactly the way I'm doing it here. Uh, but, you know. Uh, so if I were to do a fade out right here uh, and make a thing here that's just like internal void fade out, uh, then what you would do, right, is you take one of these uh, uh, and <clears throat> you can get would do it be the easiest way to do this just a bad option out here if you really you know um, so here we go so here we go so here we go Yeah, like so, uh, and you can see this update layered window function uh, is is you know it's it's something that allows us uh, to like so. So, the operating remember we did that was a long, long time here. An update, right? With see, let's take a look. Because the HDC just need, uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to compatible DC as well. Thank you very an action uh, because it's not that hard to do uh, and we will just do it on Monday and I'll try to think over the weekend what the easiest way would be to just get it to do black because I feel like we shouldn't have to create an actual whole DC set up to just put the black window over there and make it fade in so I'll think about if maybe there's a better way to do that and if there is we'll go with it all right I'm gonna shut it down all right, I'm gonna shut it down. Like I said I got to go. Uh, so yeah. Thank you very much for joining me for another episode of Handmade Heroes. It's been a pleasure coding with you as always. Okay, if you wanna follow along the series at home, you can always, um, well, you can always go to handmadehero.org and pre-order the game, because it comes with the source code, so you can follow along at home. Uh, there's also a forum site you can go to if you wanna ask questions. There's a Patreon page if you wanna support the video series and a tweet bot. Uh, which went down when they shut down our server, but I restarted it. Uh, and so in theory, it should be tweeting again starting next week. So sorry about that. Um, but I'll check that, uh, yeah. One of these days, I'm going to go bother to find where the actual startup script is on that particular server so that when it reboots, it will actually start my 
Tweetbot again. What can you do? Uh, all right, so I'll be back here Monday. Uh, and uh, you can check that tweet bot, which I will make sure is working again over the weekend if you want to know the schedule. Probably five again. I'll be back here Monday. Until then, everyone have fun programming, and I'll see you on the internet. Take it easy, everyone. Docela dobrý. Kapela nepostarána samozřejmě vůbec mohra, ale i v těch skladbách je to znát, ty zvuky a vůbec ty držky a sámy poskládat a nosit skladem. To je prostě paráda.